you can be only so deeply connected to another person as you allow yourself and practice yourself to be connected to your own heart and your own soul. Welcome back to Deeply Connected. And let's discuss why relationships fail. What's really the reason for so many divorces, separations, and relationships that might have been saved that are just falling apart? And I have a good news for you, because as daunting as it sounds, relationship failure or separation or divorce, I need you to know that most relationships can be revived or saved or they don't even have to come to any end if we have more comprehension of why we are here in the first place. So let's begin. Number one, I want you to notice if your parents have been divorced or are they still together, how does the situation look like? Maybe your parents were divorced, I have clients like that, and you used to go between homes and you are used to not attaching yourself too deeply. And so you might be in a relationship where you love your partner, but you also keep your heart protected. So you are there, you are with them and you love them, but there is this slight smudge of, I am not letting you in all the way in. So I'm keeping you at this distance. And, you know, with time, it becomes very noticeable and felt. And you know that you feel that. With time, it becomes, I'm so scared of opening up, but I want this to work long term. And that's just one scenario. But we all bring some blueprints of relationships to our current relationships. And if you are not aware, you are just acting out behaviors that you've been given and also acting out behaviors that have to do with your own temperament and your own personality. Because we come to this world with parts of us that are unique to us. And then we learn how to connect, how to disconnect, how to fight, um, how to open up just for our own parents. So the blueprint is there. So you might be wondering, what does relationship with your parents has to do with your relationship right now? And why is your relationship failing because of your relationship with your parents? So I will give you a short version of the worksheet uh, in the show notes. So please download and fill it out and notice for yourself what was missing and what was present for you. And now compare it to the relationship you are in right now and how you are feeling. So let's, let's give you an example of a client. So this person comes into the session and we did the worksheet and I can hear this pure need for just being validated and just being appreciated. It never happened for him. It was a man. And so he has learned that the only way to receive any type of appreciation, if any, was to work hard, always, always. How can I work in the business? How can I help my parents? How can I be of some kind of use to them? Now, guess how it plays out in his relationship right now? He's still trying to feel important and validated and appreciated by his actions. And so he became so overwhelmed with work that work is the only thing he can think about, that there is no space for more sexual, intimate connection with his wife because the work and as much success I can create here, maybe finally will, somebody will tell me that, you know what, you belong and I see your efforts and you are valuable and we love you. But that part is never happening because, you know, he's an adult, so the parents are out of the question. They don't even know how to do that, even though they're fabulous people. And his wife sometimes feels disconnected 
because he's almost a workaholic. So now when we see this connection between the childhood relationship to the parents and his current relationship, what is there left to be done? Well, first of all, there has to be a recognition of my parents supported me in this way. Like they taught me very good work ethic. They taught me how to be resilient. They made sure that I'm taking, taking care of financially, that I have food to eat. There are so many great things that I have learned. But there's also a gap without disrespecting and badmouthing my parents or making them this horrible people to be. There is a gap of lack of emotional connection from my childhood. I've never heard you are amazing. I've never heard you are lovable and we love you dearly and you don't have to be different or do something different for us to love you. You can make mistakes and we are always here and we are here to support you. That never happened. So imagine having this need that wasn't fulfilled now still playing out in an adult relationship. How does that play out in connection to his wife and his children? He's always busy, but he also feels overwhelmed because it's never enough. So why do relationships sometimes fail? Just because we have unhealed patterns and we have unconscious adaptations in how we cope with the lack of connection to ourselves. And you can be only so deeply connected to another person as you allow yourself and practice yourself to be connected to your own heart and your own soul. And that's one reason, right? This is like one reason of why some relationships really don't work out. We take time and we don't really do the work. We take time to just kind of suffer through them or suffer through our coping mechanisms and our adaptations. But we kind of are unaware or refuse to take any action on healing those those patterns and um, those hurts within ourselves. Next reason is um, we have no idea how to communicate. And so where we think we communicate, we come out or aggressive or passive aggressive. For a lot of people pleasers who don't practice boundaries and have no idea how it feels like even to set a boundary, what I see very often is you just keep giving and agreeing until it becomes too much, until you feel used, until your expectation of being noticed is not met, then you explode, then it's too much. Then you hear yourself say things like, I've done so much for them or for you, and I am not being appreciated. I cannot do anymore. Like, when is my time to be taken care of, right? So the communication style is connected to our attachment style. And if you want to catch up on attachments and what it even means, please listen to, um, to the episode that is specifically covering that in uh, season one. So let's talk communication. You can mean one thing, but the way you say it and how it's received, it can mean something else to the other person, right? So for example, if I have a client and she says, you know what, Ludmiwa, I just need, what I really need is for my husband to look at me and say, babe, how can I support you? Is there anything specific that would really lower your load this week? And he's not asking that. So instead of her saying, babe, it would mean so much if you could just take this off my hands this week. I would feel so much more relaxed. I'm, I'm really overwhelmed right now. And I would appreciate your support here. She says, <laughs> you never think of ways to support me. Like, I literally have to ask you. Like, can't you think for yourself and can't you see that I'm struggling? We can call it communication. And a lot of my clients call it communication when they start working with me because I'm saying words out loud and I'm expressing how I'm feeling. But that is not expressing. That is literally reacting to this bold, bold, um, repressed emotions of being unsupported and not knowing how to ask for what you need. So as you communicate in your relationship, really notice what are the patterns 
of expressing my needs. What are the patterns? What words am I using? And words are very, very powerful. Words can heal you. Words can make you feel just like the only one for the other, or they can make you feel like you are nothing, like you don't even exist. So really notice what words am I using? How am I choosing to use my words? And I had to learn that as well. I used to be a very reactive communicator. I remember whenever in relationships or any situations, even at my, at my work, something was said and I would get really aggravated and I had no skills to pause and ask myself, what is happening for me right now? I would just fly off the handle and I would go into it immediately. And I thought, look at me, I'm a great communicator. I'm standing up for myself and... <laughs> I'm, I'm really letting them know what is not working for me so they can adjust and they can change. And that is not communication. Yelling, screaming, complaining, nagging, nitpicking, right? Blaming the other is not communication. It's being reactive. It's being unaware. It's being in fight, flight response. So learning how to be mindful and learning how to first listen to yourself and notice the feelings that show up and really sit with them and understand, oh, I, I'm angry because I feel ashamed or I feel guilty that I could have reacted to the situation differently, but I didn't. So why am I such a failure? And now you become angry. Like there is so much to explore. And I will always say your triggers are your invitations. Your triggers are the opportunity to really get to know yourself better and up level in the way that you um, that you use your words and that you really express what is happening in the inner world of being you. I can tell my husband, babe, I feel like you don't understand that when I'm waking up at night with a child, that I'm so exhausted in the morning that I just need you to know that you need to take over the breakfast, you need to help out more here, and I need you to be so mindful of this because I haven't slept the whole night and I really don't feel appreciated. I can say it that way. Or I can say, honey, I didn't sleep much last night and I'm really low on energy. I would truly appreciate your help with breakfast. If you can just take care of the kids and making sure that they eat, and I know you are amazing with that, and I know you want them to be happy before they go to school. If you can step in, that's just one example it would give me some space to breathe or sleep in or take care of me because I'm literally drained, right? So this is the, the nuance of communication that not many of us have been given blueprint to. The blueprint of your communication, again, comes from your household, comes from your school experiences, comes from maybe college or workplace. I have a lot of clients that were bullied as children at school, right? What is the blueprint I was given? And do I stand up for myself and ask in the ways that um, feel aligned with how I want to be in my relationship? And um, relationship also fail because I hear often, well, we just grew apart. We have nothing in common. We just, you know, <laughs> gravitated to different things. Well, it doesn't happen just like that. It happens because we don't prioritize the relationship right? What I see a lot of times, uh, very often with women, when we become mothers, we prioritize children so much that our partner is at the end of the list. Have you noticed? I hear it from men as well. I was her priority until the kids came. And now I'm literally behind the laundry <laughs> on priority list, like right? on priority list. And for many, it is true. And so as a woman, when you become a mother, I understand there is a big responsibility and connection to the life that you've created and brought into this world. But please do not forget when the kids leave the house and if you want to still be with your partner and have adventures and live a fulfilled life, how do you maintain that attraction? Right? How do, you, the, how do you still maintain him as being a really important person in your life instead of dismissing him? I hear from men, and I will say that, I hear from men that a lot of women stop taking care of themselves. 
right? We let ourselves go. Like, I'm exhausted. I don't need to, you know, feel good about myself. Guess what? <laughs> if you don't feel good about yourself, how will you present as a partner to him? Like, it's not going to be pretty. You will be so uncomfortable in yourself and your own body. So it will have so many repercussions for you. But also what I hear from a lot of men is, you know, my wife takes the time every evening to be with the kids and, you know, chooses not to train them to go to sleep or chooses whatever. And so there is no time for us to be together. It's valid. And are there ways where the men can step in and help? Correct and sure. And they should, right? Because they are also the parent that is raising, the, raising those kids with us. But do we even ask? Because very often we train men to kind of not participate in some ways because we know it better. So another thing why relationships fail, we become the mothers to our partners. We literally, this is what I say, if you open your mouth, speaking to your partner is the next thing that will come out of your mouth. Would you say it to a child? And if you would, then please stop. Do not ask him, hey, did you take your vitamins this morning? Or if it's cold outside, don't tell him, oh, honey, you need to put on your gloves and your scarf and your, like, no, he is a grown man. He can take care of himself. When you slip into this mothering role with him, guess what? <laughs> it becomes so, ugh. it's not attractive, first of all, but the whole dynamic changes because this is, this is something we as women forget. We as women, even though we are mothers and we are the boss at work or in our company, being a woman, like it requires something different. You cannot be parenting your partner. Like that is like, just imagine this. If he wanted to be parented, he would still be living with his mother. And he's not. He has chosen you, his queen. He had you on a pedestal. Like when you were dating, I'm sure your energy was so much different. And I don't tell you that you still have to be the same person. But when you were dating, you made sure that you looked good, right? It doesn't mean that you are a certain amount of pounds, but what it means, you took care of yourself. You respected yourself enough to make sure you feel good how you dress, how you carry yourself, what you did with him while dating. Like you had a lot of adventures of fun moments and now shift into the five years into marriage, let's say, or partnership. And what are we doing? Do you tell him to stop doing certain things because they are not healthy for him? Like really catch yourself. It becomes such a routine and it becomes so automatic that you are unable to catch it when you have to. Right. So if you are finding yourself always repeating the same conflict, always having the same arguments, um, your sex life is not where you want it to be. You don't feel desired by him. You feel like what is happening right now? Right. It's already a red flag, meaning you need to take a moment to reevaluate. Mm, and when I look at myself, like literally ask yourself that if I look at myself and my habits and how I treat myself and how I think and what I do with my emotions, would I like to be in a relationship with myself? That goes for both men and women. Would I like to have sex with myself? Like just my energy. <laughs> or is there something that um, I'm not really taking care of? So I look sloppy. I don't care. I just emotionally damp, I complain all the time and I'm happy, nothing can, can make me feel satisfied. Like, would I like to be in a relationship with a person of this attitude? And, and I'm only saying this because at some point I slipped into that. Like, I remember with our first child, because, you know, we all learn how to be mothers by reading books and you can, you can get some advice from, from books or from our parents. But the question is, are you really ready to be a mother until you become one? Well, <laughs> nothing, nothing can prepare you really emotionally, right? So a lot of us as women can really slip into this. I'm, I'm a mother, I'm a mother, I'm a mother, right? And we start mothering everybody around us. I remember looking in a mirror one day and thinking, what happened to you? You used to be like on, not on like doing things, but you used to feel like amazing. You would dress up and you would wear heels and you would do your hair and you would do 
all the things that you enjoy, right? I love kayaking. I love dancing. I used to do like classical dancing, cha-cha and, and, and tango. Like I love that. I used to love um, just new adventures and experiences. I moved around a lot. So I am open to that. But in the midst of the motherhood, I kind of lost that side of myself. And then every day became the same, the same, the same, right? And so at some point I had a choice. Do I keep going this way or I finally choose something else so I can revive myself and revive my relationships? Now, another part of why some relationships don't, don't work out and fail is if you are with a person that is not growing, right? So um, I look at my marriage of 13 years and I am not the same person that I was 11, 12, 15 years ago. Neither is my husband. We have our core values, but I've reinvented myself so many times. I keep learning and he keeps learning. We literally keep growing together with different aspects of, of who we are as people, but we keep sharing our growth. We really celebrate each other for our growth. And when your relationship becomes stagnant is because you become stagnant, right? And I understand that there are phases and seasons in our life, but when you stop growing, you start dying and whatever that growth means to you. Okay. So for me, for example, in the last year, it's been a lot around business. That's how I'm growing, like how to really understand business and the, and the backside of running business and different ways of running the business. I didn't have anybody around me years ago to really teach me that. So I am doing and learning, but every year I'm learning new things. My husband loves playing piano and he's been learning how to play piano now for two years and tennis, right? I am going back to dancing and coming back to the really the roots of what makes me me. I dance at home a lot. I dance with him. I dance with the kids. But now I'm ready again in the season of how can I go back to those classes of tango and cha-cha and foxtrot. And I just love the glam of it. I love to dress up and really connect to myself, but also my husband for dance. So how are you growing? If you become complacent in your own growth, there it goes. Your relationship is going to just be okay. And in 10 years, you will say we have grown apart, like it just happened, right? So being complacent is another um, reason why some relationships don't work out, meaning you start taking your partner for granted. He's doing all the things or she's doing all the things for me. And she and he keep showing up with integrity, with giving, with all the beautiful characteristics of this person that attracted me to them. But I'm taking it for granted because it is always there. It is always, it seems to be always available. So guess what? I don't have to show appreciation. I don't have to show gratitude anymore. It's just there. We said yes, or we chose each other. So that's it, right? So becoming complacent and become un becoming ungrateful and not showing the gratitude and appreciation is a huge reason in, in this connection and attraction dissipating. Because imagine if I show up for you in the smallest ways with, with gratitude and appreciation and I'm not being received and I'm not being acknowledged, at some point I will stop. Because what's the point? So for example, a small example of my own husband is when he does work in our garage and we just moved into the new house, you know, um, a few months ago, and it still takes a lot of time uh, to have it all figured out because we are both working, we are both growing and he has a new project he's working on and I have new projects I'm working on with two kids. And every time I see him making progress in organizing things in the garage and making sure that we have the best living space for us and it's clean and it's um, just making us feel like freedom, right? Because when you look at your environment, it makes you feel a certain way. I acknowledge that. I acknowledge the simplest things and ways that are big, but they seem small, how he chooses to show up for me and our family. So there are so many reasons why relationships don't work out. And one of the most important ones is you don't fight for it enough. So you see this connection deteriorating and you just kind of hang in there. Like you think by some magical 
event is going to get better. And you need to become the hero in your own story. As a woman or as a man, you need to choose. I want this to feel delicious. I want this to feel like the day I met you, right? It's not going to be like the first date, but it's going to feel more deeper. It's going to be so much just beautiful experience with you. But if you just hang by a thread and you decide, because every decision you don't make, it's still a decision. And if you don't decide to look for support, if you don't think, wow, this relationship is in trouble or I'm in trouble, I don't know what is going on and I cannot help myself because I'm in the middle of it, get some support, get some help. Why are you waiting? Like if you are just waiting, imagine your house is burning and you are just waiting, sitting outside and thinking, well, I hope it starts raining. <laughs> but it's a hot, but it's a hot weather and it's 80 degrees. There is no rain coming. What are we doing? Like you need to be as invested in making it work as you were on the day when you said I do or as a, as a day you chose this partner for life, right? If you, you are not married, but you decide to, to be together. So how are you contributing to all of this connection deteriorating? That's a question. Like you are not just waiting here for a great relationship and relationships are work. Like let's not be delusional when we see the Hollywood movies of a woman meets a man and then there is some kind of a drama, right? Because there has to be some kind of drama because we need tension in a relationship to keep it going in some ways, but there is positive tension or negative. And then, you know, everything works out and now we're happily ever after and there is no effort shown in anything, right? It just happens like some because of emotions. Like this is not real life. Real life relationships take work. Take work to overcome your triggers, take work to see your patterns, take work to love you when it's not easy. It's easy to love when it's easy to love. But when do you practice loving your partner and yourself when things are hard? That's another skill and commitment. Like, and when we see, when we say, right, if you get married, we say for the better and the worse. Well, it seems like everybody only means, not everybody, but a lot of people don't really put attention into what it means for the better and the worse. So for the better, everybody seems to have a great right. But when challenges occur, are you there? Figuring it out, navigating it as a team? You are a team, you are working together. If you win, she wins. If you win, he wins. Like... We win together, right? So are you able to put your ego aside? Are you able to put aside, I am right? So you can remove that blockage and really come into this conversation with, with your partner, with love and understanding and also acknowledging this is the struggle, this is the pain point. How can we work for this together as a team? Because I want this relationship to work. So, there are many more reasons why a relationship fail, but today I really want you to, um, to just go back in this episode and take a notebook, download the, the worksheet below and really spend some time in recognizing if you are in a hard season or might be the season is not as um, threatening to the relationship, but maybe there is some jealousy. Maybe, as I said before, they're the same arguments on repeat and there is some disconnection in desire between you and your partner, just really take your time to assess what is happening and what do you want it to feel like for you? How do you want this relationship to go? If everything was possible, do you still want to work on saving it? And I say this, until you understand your own patterns, right, until you really see yourself on a deeper level, you can leave this relationship, but you will jump into another one without healing those parts or, or evolving in ways, and you will repeat the same pattern. So work on yourself, recognize what parts within you need to be acknowledged, need to be loved, need to learn how to express themselves, need to learn how to set boundaries, how to really step into your highest self. And when you do this work and you don't see your relationship changing or feeling like there is more connection, then you can make a decision if I want to stay or leave. But making decisions from unhealed places within 
right? And, and just being in this victim mode of my partner is not doing enough is not going to be a solution to you and you experiencing more fulfilled connection and love. <sighs> I will tell you a lot of relationships can be saved, revived, and again, just infused with more playfulness in desire if you realize your own part that you bring into this container. So with love. <sighs> Let us be deeply connected to ourselves and those around us.